Sandy Parker and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. I'm making a card today for one of my friends and this is one of my favorite kind of cards to make because it's a water-based card and you make it with gel. I'll go through the process. It's very simple. You'll be amazed at how easy this is to do. The first thing you want to do, I'm going to make an A2 size card, which is five and a half inches across and four and a quarter inches tall. So you have to make a second card. And this one is um, half an inch smaller on uh, the width and on the height. And then you're going to score it in the middle. So this is basically a four inch card. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I, if you don't have one of these um, oval cutters, you could use um, an oval punch. If you have an oval punch, you could use a circle punch. You could use whatever you really, whatever works for you. But um, it's really all about the, sorry, I had a little boo-boo on my card. I just pulled it off. Um, anyway, it's whatever works for you. It's really a matter of uh, using whatever um, method you have on hand. You don't need to get one of these. But if you're interested in it, this is from Creative Memories and it's a really nice cutting system and even I can do it. So if I can do it, you know, pretty much anybody could do it. And um, I, you just put the, you, you get this glass cutting mat and you take your oval, you hold it down and then you have you get three different uh, cutting blades and each one of them will make it further in so I pick the red one and it's the one that makes it closest so it makes the biggest and you just put it in the track and run it around the outside it's very simple really really like this system but if you don't have it I love punches too as you know so we'll take out that little oval maybe use it for something later I didn't realize this paper had a different color in the inside but we'll make it work not a big deal I'm thinking that the uh, gel will uh, eliminate any issues I have with it. Now you have to remember when you're doing this that this is a kind of Sandy's trickiest part about this project. You have to remember that this part is upside down from this part. So when you're putting your card together, your normal card base, which would be in this direction, will have the opposite in smaller piece. So that's the trickiest part, in my opinion, of making this card. So we'll start from there. I already stamped my sentiments on it, and this one says, Sending Good Thoughts Your Way. It's an old Stampin' Up! set called Too Kind. I'm sure it's retired. And then inside it says, Hope is a Wish with a Little More Clout. I really like that saying. Also from a retired set called, uh, from Stampin' Up! called Stamping... No, something with kindness. Hold on. I have to make sure I give you the right name. Because you know I never can remember these things. Blooming with kindness. I knew that it sounded wrong when I said it. But you never know if I'm going to come up with the right name or not. Uh, I always have problems right now with my paper trimmer leaving a weird edge. And I'm sure you've seen me do this. But unfortunately I have to do it on this card as well. You have to kind of clean up the edges because... I'm waiting for my new Fiskars trimmer in the mail. They are replacing my old one because I've had so many problems with the um, cutting surface on it. And I just put out a request on Split Coast Stampers asking people um, of all of the wire trimmers which ones do people recommend and so if you have one that you really recommend let me know because if this doesn't work with this last Fiskars one I'm gonna have to buy a new trimmer because I'm losing my mind with trying to do this with every one of these and the reason I'm cleaning up the inside of this is when I did my oval I had a little mishap what else is new make sure this car this piece is okay nope it has some on it too it just leaves a really um, rough edge and I can't I uh, can't deal with it okay that's pretty good much better most of this one doesn't matter only the edges because you're not going to see most of this piece but I'm clean it up anyway okay so let's start making our card since this is the, the, the one that matters, it's the one that's going to have most of the, the design on it, this is the one we're going to be spending our time on. 
I'm sorry, I have one little piece here that I need to figure out a way to fix. It's just when it, when the oval cut, it slipped a little bit. And um, I'm sure if other people would have used it, they wouldn't have had that problem. But, you know, I'm not... I'm not as coordinated as others. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Top, still weird, but we're going to have to get over it. So, since our design is going to go in the inside and around the edge, we're going to work on the edge first. You always are going to need scrap paper for this because you need to um, make sure that you, when you stamp around the edge, you're not going to have your other paper, you're not going to have it folded closed. Okay? So that's your first thing you have to remember. Now I'm going to use a combination of stamps. I have some stamps. This one is from Stampendous from 1994. I'm sure it no longer is in uh, in the world of stamps, but um, I wanted to use this one because I like the uh, coral on it and I like to stamp around the outside edge with a little bit of a little bit of coral and then uh, I have some fish stamps that I don't even know where I got them from. Let's see, I think I decided I was going to go with this one. It's from Raindrops on Roses from 1991. It's an oldie but a goodie and that's what's going to go on the inside along with the bubbles that will make it, you know, a real fish. Also from Raindrops on Roses from 1991. Then I'm going to be using a lot of peg stamps that, you know, I love. And I'm going to put some of those around the outside edge as well, as well as I have this, um, I call it seagrass, I guess, that I'm going to put in the inside. And I have a seahorse I'm going to put in the inside and some seashells I'm going to put around the outside. I might just use that grass on the outside. So let me get the grass color I want to work with. I'm going to use a color called Old Olive from Stampin' Up. I'll use that for my seagrass. And I'm um, sure if you've never heard me talk about these uh, peg stamps, they're great for little projects like this because you really control everything about them, like where the where the um, image ends up. Because there's this little line right here, and that tells you exactly where your where your stem starts. And I like that because uh, I'll be able to really make it. Um, make it my own basically because I can change the change the colors on it very easily and I mean it's just they're just such easy stamps to work with I can't say enough about them let's go with a crab and the little crab I think I'm going to do him in an orangey color I forgot to get an orange sorry I'm going to have to reach across and get some, a couple of these our little crab I'm going to make, <coughs> excuse me, in a color called More Mustard, and I just use the brush end of it, and all I do is, these are, you know, they're so little, you can, if you want to, and um, I think it's fun to do this, you can uh, put the first color on, and then this color is baked brown sugar, I'm just going to put a couple dots on my crab, and then I know exactly where the bottom of the crab is, because it shows me that with that line. Weirdly enough, that seems like it's upside down. I'm going to stamp that on a piece of paper first so we know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Now we know what we're doing. We've got a, we've got a plan now. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay. So we're going to do them in orange, and then we're going to just put a couple little dots of the brown on them. And we're going to just set him right below. Oh, he's cute. He's a cutie. Uh, I think I'll do one more crab off on the other side, and this time I'm just going to do them in, in orange because I want to make sure people understand that this crab is a little different colored in different ways. You know, like maybe one's a girl and one's a boy crab. I don't know. I think I'm going to do a third one in this coral color. And it is, if you have Spectrum Noir markers, it's CR1. Make sure I stamp them off so I don't get his color on 
all over. So I'm going to be mixing my markers too. I'm just going to be going crazy with this project. Oh, jeez, I missed it a little bit. Thing I again, thing I like about these is that I've been able to stamp over my images and not had real, it not had any kind of real mishaps with it. See, I stamped that crab twice, and it's exactly in the same spot. Isn't that cool? I love that about these. So then I'm going to do some coral around the bottom, and I'm going to do part of my coral in an orange and part of it in a blue with some green accents. And I'll show you that why I did that in a second. It's on the um, in the photo of the coral on the front. You can see that it's that's the way the coral is set. Oh, it's stuck to it. And it's from Stampendous. Hmm, it did not the orange did not come off very well. I'm gonna just see if I can stamp that part of it over again. We'll wait and see. Let's see. Good enough. I, mean, I could probably do a little bit more coloring with that in a second. So then we're gonna do the other side. And I'm going to change up that marker because I didn't love that color that much. I'm going to scratch off. And I'm going to go with this pinkier color on the other side. Seems like my marker wasn't very juicy. That's where I had a little mishap. I'm going to try to stamp that again on this side. Much better! See how I love it when a plan comes together. Let's do one on the other side. And go with this color. That was Rose Romance, and this is Lost Lagoon. And then I'm going to put a little bit of uh, this is River Rock. I'm just going to put a couple of dots in there and see if they show up. It's pretty light. I don't know if it will or not. And scratch it off to make sure I don't get any weird things in the background. That looks good. Comes out. My crab looks good on that one. I'm going to try and do that side again on this one. Because this stamp. I don't know, it just didn't stamp well the first time. Don't know, but I fixed it. I like it when I can fix things. Makes makes me feel more comfortable. I've never been really confident in my stamping, and so when I can do something like this where I know that it's gonna it's not gonna uh, fail, I feel a lot better about my projects. I'm gonna put a little bit I covered off that pink one in the river rock and I'm just kinda letting the background pink and the river rock kind of work in there together just so it looks like I have a little bit of more substance I'll call it. Okay, I might do one more of those because I really do like that. Right there. And because you can change the color on these th it looks like a completely different stamp which I think is neat too. So I'm going to put this one right there. Okay, it's very colorful so far, and I like that. Now I'm going to go back to my little. Well, let me tap a couple of these up because they're a little bit wild now. I have about ten markers open right now. Probably shouldn't have all of them open. And the orange one. Okay, we're we're back to not having so many crazy markers out. Now, let's go back to our grass. I'm going to put some of that grass down there with our coral so that it's in the mix of things as well. And if you ever have um, like an edge, see on this stamp, I get, I'm getting a little bit of green right there. So if you ever have that happen with any of your stamps, I like to trim the edges 
of them so that I don't have any lines show up. So I have these Tim Holtz scissors and I just kind of hack at the edges that are giving me trouble. And then I just throw away that excess and I'm done. Okay. Into the trash. I'll do that. I forgot that I um, got an ink pad out for this. Made it a lot faster. Stamping with the ink pad. Okay. I'm going to stamp more of these starfish inside as well. And I'm going to color in the starfish. It's an open stamp, so that means you can, uh, you know, it's clear. The middle of it doesn't have an image in it. So you can do what I'm doing, and that is just, I'm just coloring it in. Like that. I'll do one more near the bottom. And then we'll be done with our starfish. And all these are peg stamps from, um, Sorry, I can't I can't line my stamp up and, and talk at the same time. These are all from rubber stamp tapestry. I'm gonna leave that one open. I'm gonna do another one that's open too, because I like this. Both ways. And it makes it look like two different stamps when you do that. One's open and one's closed. I'll do one more down here. I know it's start starting to look a little bit like I have too much stuff going on, but this is the the part of the card that's going to be the one that you're going to you're going to focus on, and then the inside is going to have the gel. So the gel is going to distract really from the rest of the images. So I just want to make sure that you understand why we're putting so much around this outside area. Okay, I have great big shell and I thought I would stamp him in a darker color. I have a brown. This one is called Soft Suede. I think I'm done with the surface, so I'll put him back. Elizabeth, I'm using your system. You told me have all my all of my um, stamps in a, in something so they don't roll away. I've got my carnations and breakfast canister here. I'm making sure they're not rolling away. I'm just going to lay that shell off to the side. My video cut out and I'm not exactly sure where it did in the process, but the last step I did, which is probably where I lost it, is I went around the outer edge with this Judykins brush and uh, did um, s some, uh, just making everything have a little bit of blue on it. And I did that with uh, Cool Caribbean by Stampin' Up is the ink I used. Now we're going to do the inside of the card and you want to close it. Remember you're going to have the blue uh, hair gel in there so your hair gel doesn't, or your, your color of your background doesn't really matter. And the fish I'm going to be using is an old fish stamp that I've had for a while and I thought I would just put in three of these fish. They're just swimming by. And this is from an old uh, Raindrops on Roses from 1991. I bought it from a lady who was getting rid of her old stamps, and I really love any Sea Life stamp, so I bought them from her. And then these are the bubbles that go along with them. And I'm going to have to move them out of the frame for that one. Well, it's a little bit off on him, but I don't think anybody really cares about where the bubbles are. We'll get rid of that, stamp it off. And then I like to make my um, pattern cohesive, so I'm going to put some of my uh, uh, coral in the inside that I had on the outside. So we're going to quickly do some, with the wrong end, some coral again, just to make sure that our sea life looks like it's in the same in the same neighborhood as the other coral and I'm using the same colors Lost Lagoon and I think it was Rose Romance was the other one
Okay, pretty much everybody has a plastic bag of some kind. And the important part about this is making sure you seal it really, really well. You're going to put in some gel, and I like LA Looks Extreme Sport. Well, I get it at the Dollar Tree. And the reason I like it is because it's blue and because it has a lot of bubbles in it. And I mean a lot of bubbles. So um, I'm going to cut my bag down before I do anything else because the bag... Okay, the first thing that's important is making sure that your bag isn't too big. And my bag is definitely too big. So I'm going to need to cut it down after I um, trim it off. But I, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to show you this tool that I bought. It's called the uh, Smart Sealer. And if your bag is too big or if you just want to seal another, uh, if you want to make sure that you get a good seal, these things work really, really well. And all you do is just trying to get my edge. You just need to make sure that you make your um, s you're sealing your edge basically is what you're doing and you want to make sure that your bag isn't too too big and um, I'm just making sure that's still too big. Now if you're not sure of your seal and okay let's say that you don't have uh, you know like these kind of bag this smart sealer what I would recommend you doing is um, get a bag and um, really glue the ends of it shut and then after you've glued it shut then I would tape it you can use a Ziploc bag but these are such small spaces that you're putting them into that's kind of the tricky part I'm gonna make sure my bag is um, completely sealed and it is. Okay. So all you're going to do is you're not going to put a ton of gel in here. You're putting enough gel in that that it's going to um, cover the, the whole opening. And if you can see that, you probably can't. I've got bubbles in mine and that's what you want. Well, that's what I want in mine because that's what makes it so cool looking. Okay, so we got. I've got my pack all gelled up, and I put some uh, uh, foam tape inside my card, and I'm going to make sure that I line it up. Oh, it's very sticky. It's that kind that I bought at the Dollar Tree that I absolutely hate because it's so sticky. But I made sure that I have enough around my edges that uh, the the um, card should still stay closed. My bag is smaller. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. And then I put some tear tape on the back so that I can easily adhere the this to our card. So here is our first step and you can see that we've got our gel in there and our gel has some cool bubbles in it. There's some really cool bubbles in this. I wish wish you could see those bubbles better but I probably can't anyway so uh, what we're going to do now is we'll take the tear tape off the back and this project is almost done I know it's a long one but um, unfortunately there's a lot of steps to it and I have a little bit of my tape is coming off the edges so I'm just going to fold it under and I make sure you want to make sure that if you have a a stamped image in the inside you want to make sure at this point that everything's going in the right direction so remember this goes upside down to what a normal card would be whoops and I want to I'm gonna have to pull it closer to me so I can see exactly where I am on the card hopefully hopefully it's close enough I have a little piece up here that the back backing of that card is too long, so I'm going to trim it off. Sorry, I have to go off camera for that. So now our card is all complete, except I didn't. Got to find my stamp. There it is. My friend Elizabeth reminded me of this too. I've been forgetting to put my stamp on the back that said, I made this for you. And also, um, I have one final, final step, and that is my envelope. I like to put washi tape on it that matches my project in some way. And this is kind of a um, Caribbean blue striped washi. And I just run it on the back of the flap. 
hopefully straight or straight enough. There we go. We'll cut that off. And we'll be all set. So there is our card and our envelope. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you'll give it a try and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.